Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash Patchwork Heart Ministry today. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Hi, welcome to Journeys, Journeys in Faith, faith here, here on this Friday, Friday night on Fiat, Fiat Ministry Network. Network. Great, Great to, to be here. here. I have I another, another amazing, amazing guest. guest. I have, I have Kate, Kate Pato. Pato. She, she is, is a photographer, a sacred artist, artist and, and a speaker. speaker. So, so I would, I would like, like to welcome, welcome to you, you Kate, Kate Pato. Pato. Hello, Hello, Kate. Kate. Hi, Ann. How, how are you doing? doing? Hi, Hi, everyone. I'm great. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you so, you so much, much for joining, joining us here, here on this, on this Friday, Friday night, night, January 22nd. 22nd. And it, it is the day, day of prayer, prayer for the unborn, unborn also, also today. today. And, and I, know I know that you are, are also a, a person, person who's, who's uh, very, very much uh, had an appreciation for life, life at, all at all stages, stages including the theology, theology of the body. body. So, so uh, just, just to make note, note of that, that your show is on, on a special day, day of prayer. prayer. So, so yeah, we have so much to talk about. Yeah, we have so much to talk about uh, with all the wonderful work that you are doing as a photographer a sacred artist, also a dancer and a speaker. You have so much going on. And even during this pandemic, I know you've been pretty busy with the work that you're doing. Yes, it's, believe it or not, praise God, it's been pretty busy with uh, keeping up with projects and events are shifted to virtual, many of them, but um, praise the Lord, they're still happening. And uh, it just goes to show that Many are still hungry for beauty and are wanting to invest in it, which I'm very grateful for. So, yeah. That's right. And you have an amazing website that is uh, it's visualgrace.org. And it's in, you talk about encountering the divine. And it says right on your website that sacred art painter, natural light photographer, and contemporary choreographer Kate Capato offers artistic avenues to bring life altering truth, goodness and beauty into your home and community. So I know up right up on the screen, we're looking at your website and you have some beautiful photography there and such, such a wonderful appreciation for really truth, beauty and goodness, especially when it comes to Catholic religious art. And you have done so much with that. So I just want to thank you. I love I love looking at your website and and the work that you have done. Well, thank I really you. do appreciate it. Yes, it's amazing. So why don't we start out with your story? Because I know that some people who are watching this show don't know you yet. They're going to get to know you, um, but we would love to hear your story. Sure. Um, where where do I begin? Um, just more or less how how I came to do what I am doing now, right? We'd love to, yes. Yeah, so, oh gosh, I, when, you know, when that question arises when we're graduating high school, what, what to do with your life, right? I at first thought I was going to be a fashion designer, 
I knew I liked art, okay? But um, I didn't know where to go with that at that time. So I pursued fashion design because I, I enjoyed fashion enough and thought maybe that would be my route. But um, once I dove into that my first year, I realized it wasn't what the Lord was calling me to. And I, I desired to help people more. So I considered counseling and but it was it felt like two different worlds because I still wanted to um, use my art um, and I didn't know what that would look like yet. So someone mentioned to me art therapy, which is like counseling with art. So I thought, wow, that could be really helpful and beautiful to get involved with. So I started to go um, that route for a couple of years and graduated with that in mind. But once graduating, um, <laughs> the Lord again told me, you know, showed me with different things that that wasn't exactly it yet either. So I graduated and actually did some mission work with uh, the Culture Project. Some of you might be familiar with them. And they do, um, they speak to students about human dignity and sexual integrity. And I was with them for about three years and just spoke at different schools in the States and so forth. Um, and even prior to that, I did mission work in my college years and overseas. And the concept of mission was really um, big on my heart, too. So helping people in that way to encounter the Lord. Um, but again, the art was still heavy on my heart, and I, I didn't know how God would bring that together. Um, one year, I was performing at, for a dance company in Italy, actually. It was a beautiful gift that we had um, that opportunity to do that. But while there, unexpectedly, I encountered a school called the Sacred Arts School. And essentially, it's studying. Um, there's painting, there's sculpting, there's goldsmith. You could choose which route you would want, um, but all under the umbrella of sacred art. And while I was performing there, I encountered that school. And it was still fairly new at the time. And it just kind of lit a, a light bulb in my mind. I was like, this, this would be awesome. And it wasn't the time yet for me to go. So a couple of years later is when it came back to my heart and it, it just became more clear that that is where I was called to be. And I studied there for two years. Um, and I felt like it was then that my two worlds started to finally come together more fully, this concept of helping those um, with a mission heart to, to encounter the Lord, but through beauty. So really learning what that looks like um, in sacred art and how to do that with the skills that God has given me. So I kept up with dance, but I, um, I was able to dive deeper into oil painting. And um, as you see and ha have mentioned, I, I also do photography. It's kind of, it's good because I learned a lot of skills in my undergrad uh, to prepare myself that helped me with freelancing. You know, you need to be able to take good photos for your website and market and do all these things. You got to wear all the hats, so to speak. So, um, but yeah, right now I, all, all of it is slowly coming together more and more where I'm able to create paintings or dances and use that as a means to um, just share what the Lord's doing in my life and hope, hopefully give others an experience with God through that beauty that they too may be drawn deeper and deeper into a relationship with him. Yeah, that's that's incredible. And I know that your faith journey has also been something that has really drawn you so close to the Lord. Uh, you are married and also the you are also witnessing other people's marriages, right? Because I know that you also yeah. take photos for weddings. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. I know there's some photos on the website there too. Yeah, yeah. So um, as I mentioned, I, I still dabble in photography and it I probably because of my love for theology of the body, um, I'm drawn to take photos of, of weddings. So, and it's really neat because the Lord has blessed um, my business with the ability to mostly take photos of couples that are really um, strong in their faith. So spreading the witness of holy matrimony, those that want to do it with the Lord is really cool. Um, so to be able to share that as a photographer and, uh, and to use beautiful images to express the fact that three are becoming one, you know, the Lord is a part of that. Um, and then it's cool because my my painting skills also 
um, assist in a way how I take photos. So there's like a painterly aspect to how I think even when I do photography. Um, and yeah, I just, en I enjoy always doing something. So when I used to go to weddings before I did photography, you know, I, there's something inside of me that wanted to be a part of it in some way. So doing photos is a, a, a perfect way for me as an artist to, to contribute to what's happening and then to share the beauty of what took place. Yeah, it, it's, it's great. I think when someone hires a person like you to do the photography for an event, like a wedding, you use the word artistic, I mean, and, and also bringing the Lord into it, as you said, uh, that must be just beautiful to watch. And also your creative juices are also flowing during those times. I'm sure that when you're with these people and it's not just like putting people in poses and taking photos of them, right? I mean, it's really uh, thinking it through and trying to get sort of the natural uh, love that you're that you're being displayed during this wedding ceremony, right? I mean, and being able to to capture that. So I think that's really incredible. If somebody's watching and they would like to uh, have you work with them, which areas do you uh, work in? I know that you said that you're doing the photography, but not as the primary thing in your life right now. Uh, but we'd yeah. love for them to get that information in case. Uh, the information on how to connect with me for wedding photography or? Yes. Yeah. Either I mean, way. Through, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, through my web website, if you're, if you are in need of a wedding photographer and you're looking for someone who particularly understands what is happening during the ceremony and what's happening during vowing your life together, um, totally would love to chat with you. You're welcome. It, on my website, you can go to the photography page. So visualgrace.org slash photography. Um, and we can see if we're a good fit for each other. Um, but I would say my primary focus is my sacred art painting. So I do that most mm -hmm. of the time. And um, I take commissions. I also create things that are on my own heart that I feel like the Lord is calling me to create. So um, there's a lot of different ways that I um, paint and in the sense of whether it's a commission or a personal inspiration, um, but all with that sacred aspect to it. Um, and sometimes they're for churches, sometimes they're for people's homes, different communities. There's a wide um, array of what I create for, if that makes sense. It makes tons of sense. In fact, that is probably of all the work that you do. I love everything that you're doing, but the painting work that you're doing to me is just incredible. And I love to go on your website and look at it. And I know you even have a store there that people can make purchases, mm -hmm. but you talk about the commissions and tell us more about that because I know this is something really special that people can come together even with other others, maybe for their churches or communities and commission a piece of art. We'd love to hear more. Yeah, so um, I mean, it can happen many different ways. I've had families come to me. I've had couples come to me when they're um, engaged and they want to surprise the other with a beautiful painting to begin their family, um, you know, something to mark their um, their life together. Sometimes it's a special saint that has been, we like to say, holy stalking them. Um, sometimes it's just a special devotion that they might have to marry. Um, and it's essentially, you could come to me with something that might be on your heart or something that's meaningful in terms of the faith and present that. And what happens is then I pray with that. I pray with that concept. I really do my best to let the Holy Spirit lead in that inspiration. And from there, I'll create sketches and we'll look at different sketches to finally come to an agreement of what you Real, what resonates with you in terms of the composition. And then from there, I get real models and begin the actual work, whatever size that you are hoping for. And so that could be, like I said, it could be for your home, but sometimes it's where people have come to me and um, want to, to contribute to a work that'll go into their parish, which we need more today. A lot of us don't re really think about that too much, but um, We'll, we'll notice maybe a church being a little bit barren or not as beautiful as we'd hoped. But how often do we think, well, I could contribute to bringing more beauty into this church, whether that is I'm going to bring X amount of money 
to um, contribute to a, a painting or um, talk to a pastor to bring in an artist. There's many different ways that we can all be involved with bringing more beauty into our own parishes. So um, yeah, there's been moments where it's been a combo of individuals investing in that and, and, and donating their finances so that we can bring beauty into our churches more. So um, yeah, there's different, and, and then sometimes it's a community. Sometimes maybe a religious community will have it, or um, I've, I've had Catholic businesses that have little chapels in their offices where they really want to devote a space to prayer where artwork is essential for that too. So there's really different avenues um, on where where we can bring in beauty to help inspire us to encounter the Lord. Um, yeah. Yeah, when you say the word encounter, I know that's a very important part of what you do. It's even right on the front of your website, you say encounter the divine. And I right. know that you were on this show before and you know you are back again. And we talked a little bit about that, that whole idea of encountering the divine. So when you're creating these beautiful art pieces for people, uh, what is it like for you? Because you are indeed encountering the divine as you are creating it. Yeah, it's it's a story. Each one has their own story, each work. And um, really, some of them have been on my heart for years. Like um, I recently painting a, painted a work called um, The One Who Gave Myrrh, and that has that like came to me probably about four years ago and it was something that i just journeyed with and basically um it the lord was teaching me something and it took a while for and i'm still learning it if i'm being honest but it took a while for me to get to a point where i learned it enough that i felt called to put it in a visual to paint it um and and that journey was beautiful and it's not always easy so a lot of times when i'm learning something spiritually as all of you i'm sure can relate there's there's suffering in that there's trials there's understanding who god really is and who we are in relation to what what he's teaching us whether that be patience whether that be um you know sacrifice whether it's just understanding our identity further um so there's always a journey to each of the works that I create where he, the Lord, leads me into understanding a, a greater depth of who he is and who we are as his sons and daughters. Um, and if someone else comes to me with, a, with an idea for a commission, it's neat because I get to enter into their journey a little bit. It may, like I said, it may be a special um, saint that has uh, a, a place on their heart, whether they're devoted to them or um, a special image of Mary and so forth. I get to hear their stories. I kind of get a front row seat, if you will. Um, and I still still have a spiritual part of that because I pray with it. And I learned something. There's saints that I maybe knew a little bit about, but not a whole lot. And someone else will come to me and ask uh, for it to be created. And I get to learn more about them. And that's really a neat aspect um, to what I do as well. Um, yeah. It, uh, yeah, journey is the best, which is great for the title of um, your yeah. show too. It's a journey. It's really there's ups and downs to it. There's moments where, I, like, I, I created Christ the King towards the beginning of the pandemic, actually, and that one was probably the hardest work I've done, mostly because it was Christ's face, and it's like, oh my goodness, how can I actually portray Christ's face well? And I'm, I know I'm not going to do it perfect. Um, but how can I do that well? And there were days where I was, you know, feeling like I could, I'm looking at him in the eyes. And then there were other days where I'm like, oh my goodness, this looks nothing like I would imagine him to look like. So I'm frustrated and I'm kind of just in that moment of like angst, if you will. Um, but the Lord always pulls through. Every time I surrender the creation to him and say, God, you paint, you be my hands, you be my eyes. Um, it always comes through because, uh, I, like I said, I try to get out of the way and let him finalize the work. And it's cool to see it come to fruition, whatever that image might be at the time. That's incredible. Again, and, and you mentioned the word identity. And I think that's interesting because not only are you finding out about the identities of a lot of these saints and even the people that you're working with, but I'm sure that you're also learning a lot about yourself and God yeah. is speaking to you as you're 
creating these beautiful pieces of art. So I just want to thank you so much. And it says right on your website too that you say you're dreaming of having your spiritual vision portrayed in a painting that will last a lifetime. And that's a good question. So I just want to ask that question to people who are watching because whether you are an individual, a couple, a family, a church, a pastor, a business owner, I mean, these commissions and what Kate can do for you to create something that, as she says, this can last a lifetime. So much of what we purchase, buy, and use, I mean, are things that we're going to throw away and not keep, and they're not going to be a keepsake for us or our families later on. But this is something that's going to be like, not only for a whole lifetime, but even beyond that, could be passed mm -hmm. down to children, grandchildren, friends, the community, your church, right? right? I mean, I'm sure that that's also a beautiful thing for you to, to know that what mm -hmm. you're creating is something that's going to last, you know? Right. It's, it's going to last a long, long time. So I'm excited for you and I'm excited for all the people that you're working with. It's really awesome. So yeah. let's talk a little bit again about the photography, because I know that you don't just do weddings. I mean, you do other kinds of photography too, but tell us more about that as well. Yeah, um, I'll do portraiture at times or like family photo shoots, if you will. Um, sometimes event photography I've done for different um, Catholic communities, if you will. I'll go and just... You know, so if you have a, well, when the pandemic ends, if you have a Catholic event coming up and you would like a Catholic photographer, um, I've done many of that. And it's cool because a lot of times I'll, I'll be, it's, it's beautiful to connect with a lot of Catholics that way. So I'll come and share photography, but it's a beautiful gift for me too, where I get to experience those um, communities. Um, but yeah, the, that's in essence, most, mostly the wedding photography though. Um, is what I offer. And that's more of my forte, if you will. Yeah. And I'm sure that, you know, right during the pandemic, there were so much, so much less of that. I think people were still getting married, but they weren't having the big celebration. So uh, now is the time yeah. I mean, for people who are watching and you're looking for that neat. photographer. It was neat to see though, that um, the Catholic couples were still going through because they recognized the great value of beginning their life together, which was more important than the big reception party, which is fun. You know, the reception is fun and, and a beautiful way to celebrate your love. But um, it, it was neat to see how the pandemic kind of brought the focus to the nuptial, to the moment where you say, you know, this is my life, this is your life. And I, we're, we're doing this together with the Lord now. Um, it, and it was cool to have that simplified for, for many of the couples. Not that I didn't see many of them and still do struggling with the stress involved with jumping through the hoops with the pandemic, but it, it there was a lot of beauty to that. Um, it really, it really resonated and spoke to the whole world what really matters is vowing your life together with the Lord. And that's the most important part. So I was still photographing, not as much as before the pandemic, but they were still happening, praise God, just um, shorter time periods and obviously in a safer manner. That's right, that's right. But I'm sure that you and so many other people are kind of glad that we're in 2021 and hopefully going into uh, better times. Right. But I think last year was also good in many ways that families got to spend a lot of time together. And we certainly did pray a lot, didn't we? I know that 2020 was a time of prayer, a time of waiting. And mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're grateful to the Lord for, for all that he does in difficult times and in easier times. So, uh, right. so we are about halfway through the show and we do have to take a short break, but we have a lot more to talk about. So please do stay here on Fiat Ministry Network as we speak to and get to know Kate Capato. Hi, my name is Ann DeSantis and I'm the director for the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family and Faith. You can learn about us on our website at nonatus.org. I'm here to tell you today about two great podcasts that I hope that you will tune in. 
the first Tuesday of every month at 8 o'clock, we have a podcast specifically for Catholics affected by divorce. From 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, go to Philly Nonatis on YouTube to subscribe. In addition, we also have a podcast the last Thursday of every month. That's also at 8 o'clock Eastern Time for one hour. And that one is for families in crisis. We have some really great guests coming up soon, so hope to see you then. Please also consider the fact that you can make spiritual direction appointments with us, with our spiritual moderator. All you need to do is go to our website on the contact form and just reach out to us. We'd be happy to hear from you and look forward to setting up an appointment. So we'd love to connect with you. Please share this video and let people know that we're there for families affected by divorce and also families in crisis. Thank you. Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network present the Discover Your Mission series. Now I had been brought up without any prayer, without Bible, without church, nothing of that kind. And so when my father died, I became suicidally depressed. I, I had no desire to live. And yet, by the grace of God, uh, whenever I got to the point of actually taking my life, I always had this interior conviction that if I took my life, I would simply find it again on the other side and it would be permanent misery. But it wasn't until I became a wife and a mother and I began to try and pass my faith on to my children that I realized that everything I knew about Jesus was memorized doctrine. I was a good man, I was a good father, I was instilling the sacraments into my family. Uh, I was definitely not intentional, I was stuck rope in my faith. But what kind of strength did he have? Jackie did not just have a strength of body or baseball skill. He had a strength inside of his spirit, a courageous, meekness that empowered him to play the game. And I tell him what is going on with me and he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, no, no. I think this is like some sort of miracle, dude. And he's like, okay, you know, of course, but I'll believe it when I see it. Honey, you've been trying to quit and you've been saying this and saying that. And I'm, a, you know, he, his big line to me is, you shouldn't say things <laughs> because I never followed through on them. And so this was, Week after week, month after month, he is looking at me like, this is a miracle. There is no way that you, on your own, could have done this. So we are called to sing. All of us are called to sing. All of us are called to express ourselves and join our voice into the unity of the church. Uh, often with my choirs, I, I ask them to listen to each other, to listen to the, the sound that they make together as one. That's what we're aiming for. Through the harmony or unison, we're aiming for a one sound. You need to decide. What are you going to participate in? Are you going to participate in the historic Christian idea of the altar of sacrifice which is in the Eucharist or not. Journeys in Faith here on Fiat Ministry Network. Ann DeSantis here with my wonderful guest, Kate Capato. She is coming to me from generally from my area here in the Philadelphia area. I forgot to mention that too at the beginning, Kate, uh, because with the work that you're doing, I know that you live kind of in my area. You do work outside of the area too, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. I'll travel for presentations. So I'll bring my art with me and present on beauty and we'll go 
really anywhere I've gone travel. I do a lot of road trips. My husband will join. He's a musician, so he'll bring his guitar along. Um, but even for weddings, I'll travel for weddings as well to photograph couples in different states. And I've even co uh, photographed couples in different countries before the pandemic. Um, so yeah, traveling is definitely um, something we enjoy and I do. Well, that's good to know because I know that you have something coming up soon. We're taping this on, as I said, January 22nd. If people are watching it after the fact. But you have an event coming up, I think you told me, on February 4th, I think it is something to do with the year of St. Joseph. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so um, I am delivering an artwork to Indianapolis and um, we are road tripping because it, it, my artwork's often very big. So we're, and we're renting like a big truck so that we can take it with us. And um, I'll go and present about um, beauty and how we encounter the Lord through beauty. But this particular work We'll be speaking about St. Joseph and a little bit of his life. And it's awesome because it's the year of St. Joseph. And um, yeah, so the fourth we travel, I have a pit stop in Pittsburgh well, where I'll present there. And then a presentation on the fifth in Indianapolis. But if others are along that route from Philly to Indianapolis, um, I know, what is it? I think Columbus, Ohio, or another, like I said, Pittsburgh, those that journey if you are um or your church or somebody are interested in having me stop and give a little presentation either on my way there or on my way back um i would love to chat with you because i i like to do these trips where um i i bring all my art and we have time of prayer with it and just contemplation with what the holy spirit wants to do with our heart through that beauty um so it's I know it's coming up quick, but if you are open to doing something, just shoot me an email and we can figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we brought that up because listen, you never know, right? I mean, someone may be watching that's thinking, hmm, that sounds like a good idea. So do reach yeah. out to Kate at visualgrace.org. Uh, now, if it's after the fact, of course, I know that you are continuing to do these uh, discussions yeah. on beauty and dropping... Uh, some of your artwork and doing these presentations at uh, communities and churches and for individuals. So tell us more about that. As I know, right on your website, it says wanting to bring others closer to God through inspirational pr presentation on beauty. So, I mean, I think that's a great invitation for whoever's watching. Right. Yeah. So this is a, a big part of what I do because um, I've always, like I said in the beginning, I, I feel called to help others and particularly in the mission of faith. So I am privileged to be able to have these presentations. And it was awesome because of my experience with the culture project to have that time public speaking and like experience learning how to do that well. And now I get to travel with my art. And in that, I get to see how the Holy Spirit really um, pierces hearts through beauty. And so I have many, several different presentations or I can create something new, um, but all of it is under the umbrella of, of beauty because the Lord speaks to us through beauty. And when I have my art there and my husband will do his music and sometimes as you mentioned, I dance. So sometimes I'll have that a part of the presentation, really just awakening all the senses and listening to what God has to say to us through that. Um, especially in our culture today where truth sometimes is harder um, to communicate through words. Beauty is a beautiful tool, a beautiful asset, a way of sharing the faith, a way of sharing what God is saying to us. Um, it, it's especially um, something that is needed today. It's always been needed, but you can, you can see that it's especially needed today. So, you know, I, I'll speak in communities here, um, most likely um, I'm, I'm chatting with St. Joe's in Downingtown, if anyone's in this area where I might be there during Lent and sharing some of my art and chatting about St. Joseph. Again, um, a couple other parishes were, were chatting about that possibility. But if you're in a different state, feel free to reach out and we can create a, um, a road trip where I can journey along to your parish or your community um, and create something for particularly for your community. So. 
it, it's neat. Like I said, it's, it's just a moment of prayer with the art. And I'll do a presentation to kind of help people understand um, the base of beauty and what it is that God speaks to us through that. And it's, it's quite profound, but simple. Lord is, that's how he is. He's so profound, but simple all at once. And it's really just astounding to have that time and in listening through beauty. So, yeah. I think it's wonderful that you have such an appreciation for beauty. And I found for myself that as I'm getting older, I'm having even more of an appreciation for it. And, you know, you hear that term mindfulness. Now, when we look at that in terms of our Catholic faith, we can be mindful when we look at and when we appreciate our pieces of art, like at what you're doing. Would you agree with that? You can, yeah. You're, you can take it to the next level with your own contemplation with God when you're right. uh, looking at that piece of art and really thinking about how it's touching your heart and how it's touching your life. Yeah. So um, some, some of you might be familiar with the term visio divina. And if not, mm. you, I'm sure you know lectio divina, which is where you take the Bible and you, you pray with it and you envision yourself in whatever that scripture you're reading is. So, you know, you could be reading Genesis and you put yourself in the place of Adam or Eve and, or you could read the gospels and put yourself in this place where, where Christ was. It's a, it's a form of meditation. Now, Visio Divina has, works the same way, but it's with visuals. So you can do that with a painting, a sacred art painting, um, a sculpture, and it's, it's the same concept of putting yourself within it and praying with that. And really, both mindfulness and what we're talking about is learning how to be still in this moment with God. And that's so important for the de development of our character, for uh, the growth of our spirituality. And honestly, it's, it, it's something we don't do enough today. And that's why anxiety is skyrocketing, depression, all these di different disorders. Um, a lot of that has to do because we're just filling ourselves with um, noise and chaos. And we've forgotten how to be still. We've forgotten how to listen, to be mindful, as you said. Um, and I pray that these these presentations and these times of prayer that I bring to others, as well as the, the artwork that could come into their church or home, I pray that these are opportunities that people take advantage of to learn again to be still, to listen, to be mindful, and in that experience, rest, peace, hope, that strength for the journey, all of that comes because we're we're being filled with the spirit and that's not noise that's strength that's hope that's peace um is what we truly desire <laughs> we're so honored to have you here on fiat ministry network because the tagline here is saying yes to jesus christ and that's exactly what you're doing and you're talking a lot about how art and i believe this how art and beauty can really be healing to people healing to their souls because there is so much chaos there is so much distraction for all of us, there are people who are paying thousands of dollars uh, for medications and, and therapy. And I'm not saying that that sometimes uh, right. isn't needed. It is needed sometimes. Right. But I think that if we turn to beauty, if we turn to prayer, if we turn to slowing down and opening ourselves up to God in, in a greater way, one of the ways that you can do that is through something like a beautiful piece of art in your home or mm -hmm. photography, something that will, uh, it, it's it's something like having that um, reminder. It's like that daily right. reminder every day when you look at that one wall, oh my goodness, you know, how that touches my heart, how that, right. how that makes me pray. And, mm -hmm. and so I just am so glad that you're doing what you're doing. And, and I think it's really beautiful. Why don't we talk a little bit about, you mentioned the dancing, but we didn't get a lot into that. So how does that all work in with what you're doing you said with these presentations and with obviously you had a, a training in dance because you're still doing it and you're still uh, making that part of what you're offering when you do your uh offerings of, of of beauty right i mean whether it be something physical and tangible uh there's one on the screen of you there now we'd love to hear more 
Yeah, so it's it's similar in the sense of I create with the the sense of mission and um in uh, generally speaking I'm a contemporary dancer. So for those that don't know what that means, um it's kind of ballet with with modern combined. So um if you ever watch so you think you could dance there's a contemporary style within that you might recognize that. Um, but I use it as a way of meditation again. So I'll, and I've collaborated with other artists. There's this dancer that I connected with, beautiful artist who she and I have connected on this group called Catholic Creatives, which if you're not familiar with them, I recommend connecting with them if, if you're creative in any way. And um, we collaborated and created a work about the 10 virgins and essentially dove into that scripture together. and used our movement to express what that scripture was speaking. And the, the cool thing about dance is um, when, not only when, I, when we do it as dancers, but when you watch dance, there's something so relatable to it. You, you can feel the emotions even more because it's happening right in front of you. Or if you're watching a film, you encounter that experience that the dancer is leading you down. So then going back to that example of the 10 virgins, we, we collaborated with a bunch of dancers and created movement, movement to express the wise virgin, virgins and the foolish ones. Um, and what the difference was between them and the concept of really um, doing all that we do for the Lord and being ready for the bridegroom to come. And we express that through movement. No words were needed. It was shown through our, our, our body language, which has a lot of the theology of the body within that. And it's neat because we'll do that with the presentations as well. Um, sometimes we'll create Just Dance on our own and we've done just films. Um, one time we created a whole, um, collaboration with dance and poetry of another fellow Catholic creative. And we we basically took his poem and created movement to that. And it had a spiritual component to it, which was really profound. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's a lot of fun ways that you can take the movement and still speak I truth through it. Yeah, what you're showing right now is a collaboration I did with a musician in Italy where I created a movement while I was there. Um, and this one was about the sacred heart of Christ. And it's something, dance can be subtle, but you understand um, the emotions being portrayed behind it, if that makes sense. So sometimes it's less, um, specific but that draws us into the mystery and the wonder of what's taking place too so i love adding that to presentations or creating works that um use dance as well it's, a, it's just something i enjoy too <laughs> well you know i think you're really using the gifts that god has given you because uh you are an artistic person no doubt about that i mean you're living the artistic life aren't you and and be surrounding yourself with beauty is probably where god really speaks to you most in your life so if you were to become something like an accountant or a computer programmer or something i don't think that <laughs> maybe <laughs> it there but yeah it would have been where god called you but yeah it, it's just amazing it, it really is um now you talked about theology of the body i know that the last time we had you on most people I think that watch this show are familiar with what that is, but if somebody's watching and if they don't know much about it, what would be your take on theology of the body and how can they find out more about it? Right. Um, I would say in a nutshell, the theology of the body is an understanding of our identity as man and woman mm -hmm. and who we are in correspondence to the Lord. And specifically to go further, it, it it dives deep into understanding that our bodies are speaking about great mysteries of, again, who we are and who we're called to be. And one of the key messages that we will see is we are called to communion with the Lord. And this is a great desire on our heart. This is an ache that we all feel, whether we ignore it, try to... Um, 
fill you know numb it with different things but that is a desire that we have been created with because we were created for the lord but our bodies actually speak this message as well um and the concept the concept of marriage speaks of that the unity of the man and woman come together it speaks of the trinitarian love and all of it comes together and helps us understand our faith more as catholics before I encounter encountered theology of the body, I'll be honest, there are a lot of things in my faith that I, I believed, but I didn't really understand the why behind. And I really see theology of the body, this message that St. John Paul II, um, not that it was new, but he delivered it in such a tangible way for us. And when I encountered that, I felt I finally understood the why behind a lot of what the church teaches things that may seem that you know there's just you know they're old hokey pokey and they have these traditions that need to go no they're rooted in such beautiful truths about who god is and who we are and some of those things will never change because it's expressing something that's so important to the reason why we're living um and again the ultimate call is that communion with god um so uh it's neat to try to express that as in subtle ways as, as well as explicit ways through my art and um it, just also acknowledging which is really beautiful the theology body speaks about the profound goodness of our bodies the profound goodness of sexuality like the church doesn't say any of this is bad and in fact, it's so good that it has a powerful meaning and purpose. Um, so I would encourage those that don't know about Theology Body to um, just seriously just Google Theology Body and you'll find tons of books on it. There is an actual institute where you can go and take um, a week long retreat to dive deeper into it. If you go to Theology Body Institute, I don't know their exact web website off the top of my head, but I'm sure if you Google that, you'll find it. Um, Christopher West, um, interprets what St. John Paul II has written, and he writes it in an even more tangible way for um, those of us that maybe feel like JP2's writing is a little lofty for us. Um, he does an excellent job at, at helping us understand it even more. So see, just Google it. You're welcome to send me a message. I can share some resources, but I promise it will, it will change your life for the better um, once you encounter it. I agree. And to me, it's a phenomenal thing when you think about how much it's kind of exploded within the Catholic world, I would say in the last 20 years. I'm not exactly sure when Christopher West wrote his uh, his own sure. uh, book on the theology of the body. I know that originally John Paul II wrote it back in the, I think, late 70s, early 1980s, I believe. But uh, it's it's amazing to see how far it's come, right? And I think especially with the internet and with all of these online conferences that have been happening, uh, I like to see the fact that more people are learning about it and more people are also just, uh, l like you said, kind of diving in to, to really discover what that means. And then on the topic of bodies, you were saying that we our bodies are made good. It's good to hear too, because a lot of people think only about the exteriors. Okay, I need to lose some weight. Okay, I'm not so attractive or something, you know. So I didn't know if you had anything to say about that because uh, God did make us good. And it doesn't matter, you know, what the world thinks of how how our face looks or how our bodies look. It's all good, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And we are, we are made in his image and likeness. And a lot of... Um, recognizing the beauty within ourselves will come when we spend that time with the Lord. And just even, I would encourage those that struggle with it, which I think we all do at certain points, um, to spend time asking the Lord, how do you see me? Like, show me how you see me. And it, I've done that myself and it's been very healing. And I need to continue to do that because there's still lies that the evil one speaks to us or that we'll receive through social media or just these silly, um, standards that we put on ourselves and god god sees so much of us that's so profound that we just we need to um ask him to show and reveal that to us and in doing that we're able to also see the beauty in others much better because sometimes that's hard to do at, at times um and all of us were created 
with such profound intentionality are where we are at this point in time like all of it is how we look everything is so profoundly intricately intentional god has a reason for all of it and when we spend that time to um let the lord show us what that is not he won't reveal it all at once but bit by bit it it's really beautiful and healing um and gives you a confidence that enables you to walk through life um more united to your identity and to christ yeah you said it so well it really does it helps to unite and uh and you answer that question very well because some people may hear all of this and think well it sounds really good and maybe if somebody's really good look look good looking or doesn't have to lose weight or if they're happy with their body image or their face then yeah the theology of the body is good for them but I think it's good that the way you said it, because, you know, we were all made in God's image, you know, everyone, all of us are different. And, you know, what, what you think may not be beautiful to God, it is, and to somebody it is too. And it also helps you to have that appreciation for uh, the many different types of people that there are in the world and to appreciate all of them. And I think it also helps us. I know that it helps me to look at the soul too. That's so important. We don't see the soul right? But we can see it acted out in facial expressions and uh, right. behavior and smile and uh, emotions, right? I mean, we can, we can see the soul through the way that someone expresses themselves. And that can be through beauty and through art too. Right. So, and that's a yeah. deep desire on our, all of our hearts to be seen. And Theology Body goes into that. Like the message, if you were to study and read the book, it talks about how our ache to be seen and to be known. Um, and this is why sometimes we reach out to things that d don't actually give us what we're desiring, why we enter in relationships that aren't what the Lord calls us to or into addictions that, that pull us away from what our heart really wants. But at the root of those things, there's a good desire to be known, to be loved, to be cherished, to be seen for who we really are. And that's a great desire and the Lord sees us and we need to spend that time in that gaze with the lord because that's where the healing is going to come that's where we're we'll learn not to go to these things that are not satisfying our heart but in fact are hurting us worse or hurting others even um but the 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 root of all those things that we do that are not good that desire that root is good and um that's why the message of theology about you is so powerful. It, it acknowledges the great good at the root of it. And then it points us to the right direction of where to receive that desire. And what, what are these desires actually telling us? Yeah, said so well. And you know, that's really all, everything that you just said is really all about what you are offering as Kate Capato and a visual artists visualgrace.org right <laughs> offering not only oil paintings photography wedding photos beauty presentations uh speaking engagements and dance and theology of the body all of this so i would just invite people either her website's right there is to get to know kate by going to visualgrace.org and i'm just so grateful to you because uh, i love having you on as a guest and I think that you are an amazing person that we are going to continue to see in this world as you are offering these gifts. You have so many gifts and talents that you're using. Would you have any advice for somebody who's watching and thinking, wow, Kate is so talented. I want to use my own talents. Not everybody has like the artistic talents. Like for instance, I mean, people who are more uh, analytical or whatever, you know, they might not be those people who are called to uh, artwork, if that makes any sense, you know, or getting involved. No, I think, I think art is really for everybody though. And I mean, uh, there's something about the practice of art that's so good for our brains too, isn't it? Just doing a little yes. bit of drawing or something like that. Yeah, well, even just the fact of co-creating in some manner, and that could just be for our own personal enjoyment, but it could be for a hobby. It could be for something eventually that you do more full time. But all of that is entering into something that's very profound as men and women that are made in God's image. We are co-creators with the Lord. So 
that could be done by gardening. That could be done by baking. That could be done by having children, you know, when you're married. These are different ways that we're co-creating with the Lord. But dabbling in painting, dabbling in sculpture, there is a healing aspect to that. So I encourage you to try it and not be afraid and think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be good enough. Um, really just, I think the best way to go about it is like, let me think to yourself, let me do this with God. Let's have fun with God. Let's create with God. And when you do that, there's, it's like a prayerful way of just enjoying God's presence. And he sees all that we do is so beautiful. Like when a child gives um, their parent something that they drew, they hang it on the fridge, they hang it on the wall. They acknowledge the beauty that it is. They don't say, oh, this is horrible. You did a horrible job. Um, they love it because their child created it. And that's how God sees us too. Um, but for those in terms of talents, like God has given each of us unique talents. There are many things that I cannot do that I, you can ask my husband, that I like stress about and even in the business realm that I'm learning and God's providing. But there are many things that do not come naturally for me um, and are quite challenging. And I'm sure you who are watching would have those gifts that I would not have. And God has a special place for you to utilize those for the kingdom in some manner. Um, so, uh, you know, don't believe any lies that the evil one might be saying to you that you don't have a talent, that you don't have anything to offer. That's false. We all have something. We are all the body of Christ and we are all a different part of that to contribute to the kingdom. And you have a special call that is different than mine. <laughs> and it's great to encourage each other in those different callings and to say, praise God for the gift that you have that I may not have and um, keep using it for the Lord, keep, keep growing it. That's the other thing. If you have a talent and you see it, there's a desire to use it, God's calling you to grow it. I had to go to Italy to study further and I still need to study further. Um, I continue to study dance. These are ways that God wants us to invest in what we've given him. Um, because the other thing is sometimes we do have a talent and we forget about it or we don't prioritize it, we don't invest in it. And um, it doesn't grow and it's not as good as it could be because we have not invested in it. So that could be some of you listening as well. And maybe God's saying, I'm calling you to invest in the talent that I've already given you. So take the time to study it further, to do the hard work that it takes to become better at this gift that I've given you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're almost out of time, but you have been an incredible guest. I'm so grateful to you. Would you please come back again to Journeys in Faith? Sure. Yeah. Thank awesome. you for having me. It's been great to be here. Yes. Yeah, so we'll have you back again. Now, I also would like to invite people to go to a special website later on, uh, patreon.com slash patchwork heart ministry, because Kate and I will be doing a special five minute show called Five Minutes of Faith. Uh, so please do join us there. The, it's up on the screen and it's a great opportunity to the Discover Your Mission series. Thank you so much. So we'll see you all next week here on Journeys in Faith. Journeys of Faith is a production of Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry. For more information about Journeys of Faith, email info at fiatministrynetwork.tv. And be sure to friend, follow, and like us on social media. Just search Journeys in Faith with Ann DeSantis.